We are joined right now by none other than former FEC Commissioner. He is the Heritage Foundation's senior legal fellow, Hans von Spakovsky. Hans, welcome back to America First. Sebastian, thanks for having me back. How are you surviving the coronavirus craziness? Well, my dining room now looks just like my office uh, <laughs> used to look with uh, piles of paper everywhere and books and, and everything. So I'm feeling right at home. A, uh, an untidy office is the sign of a great mind, I'm told. Anyway, that's my excuse. <laughs> I don't know what Nancy Pelosi's excuse is. We have an audio cut. I want to cut straight to the chase. I want to talk to you about ballot harvesting. I want to talk to you about mail-in voting. Let's listen to the Speaker of the House, who, unlike uh, a certain chief of staff of President Obama, never saw a crisis she wasn't ready to exploit. Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, Cut 18. Economic livelihood so important, as well as the life of our democracy. So in this next bill, we will be supporting uh, uh, vote by mail in a very important way. We think it's a health issue at this point. And I didn't want to leave the, this conversation without mentioning the importance of the life, the livelihood, the life of our people, the livelihood of, of themselves and our economy and the life of our democracy. So they're going for it, hands in the first bailout package. They try to smuggle in a federal regulation that would make ballot harvesting legal across all 50 states. Now she wants to have voting by mail. Can we break those two things down? Because you are the expert. You are the Heritage Foundation's authority. Let's start with ballot harvesting. We try to be educational here. We want to give our listeners, our viewers, as much information as possible. Describe in simple terms what is ballot harvesting? And why is it so dangerous? Well, look, state, uh, you can vote by absentee ballot, particularly if you're uh, sick or disabled, can't make it to the polls. You can uh, mail that ballot back once you've completed it. You can hand deliver it yourself, or you can have a member of your family do it. But in a number of states, California, for example, they have legalized what's called vote harvesting, which means anybody can show up at your front door pick up your ballot, and then go deliver it. And, of course, the problem with that is, is that um, that gives access to your ballot, a very valuable commodity, to uh, candidates, campaign organizations, party uh, volunteers, political guns for hire, all of whom have a stake in the outcome of the election. And for anybody who thinks that's a wise idea, all you got to do is you know, just look very quickly at uh, 2018, the only contested congressional race in the country was North Carolina's ninth congressional district. The election was overturned. Why? Because one of the candidates hired a political consultant who he and his staff went to people's homes to collect their absentee ballots. And the evidence showed that they forged signatures, changed ballots, and in some instances just took the ballot from the voter and completed it themselves. That's what absentee balloting makes possible, and that's what vote harvesting makes possible. But, but uh, am I going insane, Hans? How is this not obvious? This is giving the keys of the hen house to the fox. The idea that without any accreditation, without any official ex officio function, somebody who's from the state who is allegedly neutral, but people who work in a campaign, People who represent candidates or who are candidates should be allowed to collect the votes and deliver them. How on earth did we get to this place where people thought this should be part of our electoral system in America? Well, look, I agree completely with you. It's just not common sense to allow that. But liberals have really been pushing this idea. Uh, and look, and again, anybody who wants to know why. There's actually video. There's a video out there that somebody took with their doorbell video system from the 2018 election in California, and it shows a young woman who's working for the Democratic Party coming to the door and saying she's there to pick up Democratic ballots. In other words, she wasn't interested in picking up the ballots if you're voting for anybody else, only in picking up Democratic ballots. And I, I think, unfortunately, uh, liberals seem to think that this will make it easier for them uh, to win elections, and it makes it easier to cheat. Talk to us about vote. The, what Nancy is talking about right now, this voting by mail. Why is this also incredibly dangerous an idea? 
Well, look, uh, there's no reason for a federal bill on this, because like I said, in every state, you can already vote by absentee ballot. That's because what her bill did was it put in all these provisions that basically eliminated the security protocols that states have. I mean, just to, a quick, again, just give you a quick example. Um, her bill uh, said that, uh, look, right now, uh, absentee ballots, as long as they're postmarked by election day in many states, they'll be accepted. Her bill would have gotten rid of that and said, oh, states, you have to accept uh, absentee ballots as long as they're signed by election day. Well, how in the world are election officials ever going to be able to know that the voter actually signed them by the end of election day? How are they going to know that people didn't actually wait till after the preliminary results came in to then vote and change the outcome? I mean, that was a foolish requirement. It has nothing to do with the coronavirus. Or, or another one, um, absentee ballots in the states. They start counting, processing and counting them at the end of election day along with all the votes cast in person. Her bill would have required states to start processing and tabulating absentee ballots or mail-in ballots two weeks before Election Day. Now, what does that mean? It means that if preliminary results were leaked out, it might deter some people from voting if they see their candidate is potentially losing. Or if it's leaked to candidates uh, who are behind, it might help them uh, change their tactics to change the outcome of the election. Again, there was no reason to make a change like that unless you want to manipulate election results. It had absolutely nothing to do with the coronavirus. And why, uh, why would you even connect anything to do with changes in the way we run our elections in the midst of a national emergency, the likes of which we have ever never seen? That in itself is incredibly suspicious but we know the real reasons it's because they want to mess with the integrity of those elections we are talking to hans von spakovsky senior legal fellow at the heritage foundation follow him on twitter h von spakovsky he tweeted this out not too long ago you know all the empty shelves you're seeing in grocery stores if socialists get elected and take over the government and the economy get used to it Get used to seeing that every day and all the time. Yes, indeed, as a child of those who escaped communism, I can verify that. Hans, um, I, I want to ask you one thing on elections, on the integrity of American elections, and then move over to an article you wrote about the whole IG system. What can the average American do? Is there anything that, that, that Americans can do uh, to help make our elections more robust? Well, yeah, I mean, just in general, they ought to uh, get, get jobs working in polling places uh, on Election Day so they can see what's going on and do the right thing. Uh, if they can't do that, they should uh, be poll watchers, work for the candidate, uh, the political party you like, because you want to be there with an eagle eye to make sure everything's being right, done right. Right now, they need to be closely monitoring their state to make sure that election officials aren't doing things like suddenly saying, oh, uh, we're not going to apply an ID requirement if your state has one to uh, the, the mail-in voting process, or if they suddenly say, uh, made other changes, like say, oh, we're not no longer going to do signature verification on absentee ballots uh, because we somehow think that'll keep people from voting. All of those kind of security measures need to remain in place and they, we shouldn't use the coronavirus to try to change that. You heard him right here. My wife does it. She volunteers every election. So can you make it as hard as possible for them to lie, steal, and cheat? In the last few minutes we have with you, please follow this man, H. Von Spakovsky, on Twitter. Hans, uh, you and one of your colleagues has written a piece on, on a certain IG, an inspector general. With your experience in government, living in the swamp, um, can, can you disabuse me of my belief that IGs are pretty useless, that for all the reports that are written by inspector generals, very rarely does anything actually happen to police the findings that they come up with. Should, should we be uh, more cynical or less cynical when it comes to inspector generals, especially in recent years? Uh, no, unfortunately, you're right. And the reason for that is that all IGs can do is, is, is file reports. You know, if they find, for example, that a 
FBI agent or a Justice Department lawyer broke the law in their opinion, in their mishandling, for example, of the, the Trump-Russia collusion hoax, um, all the IG can do is report on it. He cannot prosecute those individuals for breaking the law. The reports are given to, for example, the Justice Department, and the prosecutors there then make the decision whether or not to prosecute somebody an IG has said uh, uh, has, has broken the law. And oftentimes, unfortunately, the Justice Department does not act and doesn't do anything about those um, IG uh, recommendations. And unfortunately, there also uh, there are particular IGs who have acted in a totally what I consider to be partisan manner in doing their jobs. In the last minute we have, does that mean that there should be a wholesale reform of the IG system? Should it be scrapped or should we just have the DOJ take more seriously the recommendations? What would Hans von Spakovsky's uh, wish list be? I don't think the system should be scrapped. Um, I do think there probably ought to be, it, it needs to be reviewed and looked at whether or not there need to be reforms made in it. And yeah, I think um, the Justice Department needs to take these reports much more seriously. And if an IG recommends prosecutions, DLJ should have to justify why they're not uh, doing it. I like the way he thinks. If there is a concrete recommendation to investigate, then the Department of Justice should have to explain itself when it doesn't. That's why he is the expert. Follow him, H. Von Spakovsky, on Twitter. I'm Sebastian Gorka. This is America First on the Salem Radio Network.